Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be on the Dreams and Vision series. Get your King James Bible. Turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 4. Now, remember, King Nebuchadnezzar, was king of Babylon, physical Babylon. And in the end times, there's going to be a spiritual Babylon. And, you know, it kills me that uh, all these so-called Bible scholars, they write books, you know, and then they say, oh, Mystery Babylon, and they were writing books about how King Hussein uh, of Iraq was going to rebuild Babylon. That's the kind of garbage you get when you listen to TV preachers. The Bible says that Babylon would be destroyed and never be rebuilt. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to... I. You could, you could look it up. All I know is there's not going to be a physical Babylon. There's going to be a spiritual Babylon. And if you don't believe me, Jeremiah 51, 12. Yeah, you can read Jeremiah 51, the whole thing. But it says, set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. Uh, let's see. Jeremiah 51, 29. And the land shall tremble in sorrow for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. Oh, yeah. So, Jeremiah 51, 37. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment, and an hissing without an inhabitant. So, there you go. All right. So, let's go to Daniel chapter 4. Now, remember, um, King Nebuchadnezzar was the one that set up the, uh, the image, just like he did with the, uh, the image that he saw in his dream. And uh, the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, decided they weren't going to worship the image. And uh, he cast them into the furnace of fire. And um, they didn't even get a hair singed and no smell of smoke on their bodies, nothing. But uh, I've covered that in prior Bible studies, but this is on the Dreams and Visions series. So we're just doing the Dreams and Visions. I think I'm going to take a look at the uh, Daniel's End Time Beast also. Because I'm not sure. Everybody... Most everybody, well, I should say a majority of people say that the end time uh, beast system is going to be the revised Roman Empire. I'm not convinced. And then you got people like Walid uh, Shobat, who uh, the Jerusalem Post, I think it was the Jerusalem Post newspaper, said he was a fraud. Uh, he claimed that he uh, was a terrorist and threw a bomb on a bank's roof and it blew up. And then the Jerusalem Post, I think it was the Jerusalem Post newspaper, uh, contacted the bank and the bank's like, no, we never had a bomb explode on our roof. I mean, you know, if, if you had a bomb explode on the roof of your business, you think somebody would remember or, you know, the story. So... And if this guy was a terrorist, how did he come to the United States? I mean, how does that work? 
I mean, really? Um, but uh, he's uh, Wally Shobat says that uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, Islam. He's, he says the uh, it's going to be uh, Islam is going to be the end time beast system. It's funny they uh, pick every beast system except for the one in the Middle East, um, whose headquarters is Jerusalem. But what can I tell you? Daniel chapter four verse one. And oh, by the way, Islam and the Vatican are not that far apart. They really aren't. You'd be surprised. There's the the Vatican's allowed in Arabic Middle Eastern countries. Yeah. All right, Daniel chapter 4 verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king. Now, remember Nebuchadnezzar is writing this under what I believe is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Was he saved? I think it's a very distinct possibility. Listen to this. Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the, that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, see, who's, who wrote this? I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid. Ah, here's that dream. Dreams and visions. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them, but they could not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. And we cover that in uh, Daniel chapter 2, the last study that I did. Verse 9. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, All right, well, you know, you kind of wonder. Here it is, this guy's writing the book of Daniel, a chapter in the book of Daniel, and uh, Belt, Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's not saved. I don't know. And in whom is the spirit of the holy gods? Before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Gods, plural. Yes. There's only one. And no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of my head in my bed I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof, thereof was great. I think I did a couple of videos on trees. Uh... There's a tree of life, and then there's the tree of good and evil. All right, so, verse 10. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed. 
I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. Okay. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. And I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one come down from heaven. Now, I do not put much stock in the book of Enoch. There's more than one. Uh, there's one edited by Charles. That's usually the one that uh, believers read and believe. Well, some of them read and believe. I don't know. I don't have much stock. I don't put much stock in the book of Enoch. However, the book of Enoch calls angels the watchers because I guess they're watching us. So, so if you're wondering what these watchers are, there's a very, I, I personally think that they are the angels. So 13, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. So, it's got to be an angel. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree, and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it, and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass. Now, iron, when you trace iron back, to, first mention is in Genesis 4, it's associated with the lineage, the generations of Cain. And uh, brass, as near as I can tell, Brass refers to the uh, people that are unsaved. People that are saved are likened unto silver. And then God is likened unto gold. I mean, let's face it. You take the L away from gold, and what do you got? God. But that's an entire Bible study of its own. I'm just kind of throwing that out there. That's not the. Um, uh, that's not what this Bible study is about. So there's a band of iron and brass. Just like the uh, you had the ten toes of the image. They were part of clay and part of iron, and they didn't cleave together. So you had a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from a man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. Now what's a time? Uh, a time is considered a year. And the Bible will prove that shortly, I believe. Verse 17. This matter, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones 
to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it in uh, and setteth up over it the basest of men. Uh, base men means, you know, those of low, low character, low standards, evil people. Now remember something. You know why we have the uh, the government that we have. I don't care if you're in New Zealand, Australia, Europe the UK, or the USSA, or one of the former Soviet states, or Russia, doesn't matter. God is in control. We have the government that God decrees because of the wickedness of the people. Like I've said a number of times, a pastor that i deeply respect once told well i heard him once say he didn't tell me directly just in a bible study he said that the uh the rulers of a country would be a reflection of the spiritual state of the people when you had a, a righteous nation you would have righteous rulers when you had wicked rulers take a look at the people it's a mirror reflection, basically. So, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. 18. This dream, I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, forasmuch as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able. For the spirit of the holy gods, plural, is in thee. I don't know, why. how in the world could Nebuchadnezzar know about the God of heaven and he's uh, and saying the spirit of the holy gods. I, I just don't get it. But what do I know? Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwell, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king. Ah, King Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, that's the tree. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. See, Babylon was considered the greatest world kingdom. Uh, per the Bible, uh, at least until the end times, because all the other kingdoms were considered inferior to him. Hmm. So, verse 23, And thy dominion to the end of the earth, and whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven, and saying, Hew the tree down. Cut it down, right? Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots, the roots of Babylon, remember that, mystery Babylon, 
yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. That's right, God rules, and, you know, he gives, he gives the kingdom to whoever he wants. You know who the three greatest mass murderers in history were by sheer numbers? Spot number three, Hitler, supposedly, if you can believe anything that the media tells us. Number two, Stalin murdered millions of Christians. That was the, uh, he killed millions of them. Who's number one? Mao, Maltese Tung, Communist China. Isn't it amazing? The first and second mass killers and uh, number of killers in history are communism. But they were there because God allowed them to be there. And that's what the whole thing is all about. Till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to, given, giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness... Ah, break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. So, Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar, get rid of your sins by righteousness and show mercy to the poor. Sounds like good advice, huh? If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king, Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. Oh yeah, I did it. These hands did it, not the Lord. That's basically what he's saying here. Verse 31. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth, giveth, giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, 
and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth for ever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. Ah, do you know that heaven has an army? Hey, earth has got an army too. Trump's building a space force. I bet you that space force is going to be, the purpose is to uh, try to thwart Christ when he comes to reclaim his kingdom on earth. I guess at the end of Satan's, I, I think Satan has a lease. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it's just kind of like a little pet theory of mine. Maybe not true. But right now, the Lord is testing and trying every single one of us. Who is going to serve Satan? Who's going to serve the Lord? We all have a choice. So, which is it? Nebuchadnezzar found out. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? In other words, you're not going to go to the Lord and say, What do you think you're doing? Well, you can, but won't do you any good. At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and my excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and Honor the King of Heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. And that is the end of Daniel chapter 4. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.